O. The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris in his orchestra. The orchestra opens the program with Hooray for Hollywood from Hollywood Hotel. Everybody knows the familiar expression, I'm from Missouri, you've got to show me. Well, if you're the kind of a person who likes to prove things for yourself, here's one swell way to prove how extra rich and extra good Jell-O is. Just make this simple test right in your own kitchen. First, open a package of Jell-O and smell the fruit-rich fragrance that rises from those powdery crystals. Then dissolve your Jell-O in hot water and enjoy again the delightful aroma of fresh, ripe fruit. More proof of Jell-O's extra-rich fruit flavor. And for the final proof, that's the best of all, taste Jell-O. Then you will know how good it is, for Jell-O has a delicious, satisfying, extra-rich fruit flavor that makes every Jell-O dessert a winner every time. So don't accept any substitutes for Jell-O. Always insist on the real thing. Look for the big red letters on the box. They spell Jell-O. Hollywood played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Wait a minute, Don, wait a minute. This one's on me. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you a man who is today celebrating his 15th year in radio, my friend and your friend, Don Wilson. (laughs) (laughs) Well, take it, Don. (laughs) Well, thank you, Jack. And hello again. This is Don Wilson talking. Atta boy. Say, Jack... It's mighty sweet of you to give me that nice introduction. That's what I call a nice introduction. That's what I call a lovely, spontaneous gesture. Well, Don, I couldn't help it. I read in the paper yesterday that this is your 15th anniversary. Radio. To be congratulated. (laughs) Well, uh, why shouldn't I enjoy radio? You're such a swell fellow to work with. You're kind, considerate, lovable. Generous? No, lovable. Well, even that's something. But tell me, Don, what was radio like 15 years ago? I mean, what were you doing then? Were you an announcer? Oh, no, no, Jack. I started out in radio as a singer. Oh, a singer, huh? Oh, you should have heard me then. Yes, sir, that's my baby. No, sir, I don't mean maybe. Hey, hey, that's my baby now. Chop! <laughs> oh, uh, a crooner, huh? <laughs> so you started out in radio as a singer. Yes, and then I thought I'd change to an announcer. You thought? (laughs) Listen, Don, Bing Crosby's horse has got a better voice than you have. Well, he's got a trainer. Oh, (laughs) that's right. You know, Don, I don't recall ever hearing you sing. What was your name in those days? Was it Don Wilson? Oh, no, Jack, I was part of a trio. We were known as the Three Melody Boys. Oh, you were part of a trio. Mm -hmm. Uh, Who was the other fellow? (laughs) Hmm? (laughs) Oh, Jack, you can kid me all you want to about my weight now, but back in 23, I was much thinner. In fact, I was positively sylph-like. Oh. Well, Don, a lot of food has gone over the dam since then. You know, I can't picture you ever being slim. You have such a big waistline. Oh, I don't know, I don't know. My stomach isn't so large. It isn't? No. Well, just the same, I'd hate to have to knit you a girdle in a hurry. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, hello, Phil. Hello, Jack. Congratulations, Don. Oh, thanks, old boy. (laughs) Say, Phil, that was quite a surprise to me. I didn't know that Don was in radio that long. Oh, sure. I remember Don way back in the old days when I used to be a drummer in an orchestra. Oh, yes, Phil, you were a drummer. Say, when did you give up the drums and become a leader? When I lost one stick. (laughs) Well, you should have lost both. (laughs) You know, I can't understand with all the beautiful instruments in the world, like a violin, for instance, why anybody would take up drums. Why not? Now, there's no melody to a drum. Ratchet-a-tat-tat, boom-boom, crash-bang-clink. 
It's a fine instrument. Sounds like Andy Devine eating celery in a boiler factory. <laughs> Well, your violin sounds like somebody giving a pig a hot foot. <laughs> Just the same, a violin is the king of instruments and a drum is nothing. Now, wait a minute, Jack. Did you ever see that famous painting called The Spirit of 76? Yes, once on a calendar. Well, what do you see in that picture? A flag, a fife, and a drum. You don't see a violin there. Well, for your information, Phil, the fellow carrying the flag is a violinist. <laughs> Where's the violin? His violin is in back of the flag. Then why isn't he playing it? Because he's behind in his union dues and shut up. <laughs> you know, Phil, someday you're going to argue me right into a new band leader. Hello, Jack. What are you mad about? Oh, it's Don's 15th anniversary. <laughs> I mean, Phil is quibbling with me again. <laughs> Say, Mary, aren't you going to congratulate Don? This is his 15th year in radio. I know. Say, Don. Yes, Mary? As soon as I read in the paper that this was your 15th anniversary, I went right home and wrote a poem in your honor. Oh, it's mighty sweet of you, Mary. Well, here we go, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't mind it tonight. Really, I don't. I think Don deserves a poem. Uh, what's the title of it, Mary? A Knickerbocker Hotel. <laughs> Knickerbocker Hotel? What's that got to do with Don? He owes them a month's rent. <laughs> oh. Well, go ahead with the poem, Mary. Look modest, Don. <clears throat> oh, Don Wilson, oh, Don Wilson, 15 years ago today, radio first swept the nation. Now you and it are here to stay. Well, so far, that's very ungoofy, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. You were born in the town of Denver, in the mountains called the Rockies. Also born there was Paul Whiteman, but neither of you would make good jockeys. <laughs> Say, you must have done a lot of research there. Oh, Don, was Paul Whiteman born in Denver, too? Yes, he was, Jack. Well, incidentally, Phil, Paul Whiteman plays a violin, not a drum. Who's Whiteman? Oh, quiet. <laughs> Go ahead with the poem, Mary. Right. Oh, Don Wilson, oh, Don Wilson, with your laugh and smile and chuckle, for 15 years you've been announcing, and for words you've never stuckle. Stuckle? Yeah, I got stuck. Oh. <laughs> Go ahead, Mary, and good luck, old. <laughs> oh, Don Wilson, oh, Don Wilson, you're the nicest man alive. How we love your cheeks so rosy and your chin three, four, and five. <laughs> Mary, Don's only got two chins. Look under his collar. Oh. oh. Are you through, Mary? No, one more verse. Oh. Uh, we salute you, dear old Wilson. You're blushing now, but you'll get paler. Hmm. And we salute the stork who brought you, even though he used a trailer. <laughs> well, that's very good. Wasn't that sweet, Don? Oh, yes, it was. Thanks, Mary. I'm overwhelmed. Well, say, I've got another idea. Phil, how about playing something now that was popular back in 1923 when Don made his debut in radio? I got one already, Jack, and I dedicate it to good old Wilson. Then hit it. Gee, I feel 15 years younger already. <laughs> you in a taxi, honey. You better be ready about half past eight. Now, honey, don't be late. We want to be there when the band starts swinging. Remember when we get there, honey. The two steps, I'm going to have them all. I'm going to dance down both my shoes as they rag the down-home blues. Tomorrow night at the Darktown Sutter's Ball. Yes, it's going to be a gala affair. Everybody's going to be there. Alexander's going to play the music. Come in, Alex.
medley of Darktown Strutter's Ball and Alexander's Ragtime Band, played by the orchestra with a surprise vocal by a reformed drummer. <laughs> you know, Phil, for a guy that stays up all night like you do, your voice has a remarkably fresh quality. I don't stay up all night. You don't, eh? Why, that look like an ad for ye goody donut shop. <laughs> How's that, folks, huh? <laughs> You should talk. The bags under your eyes are so low it looks like your pants need pressing. <laughs> now listen, Phil, and let this sink in. I could stay up all night and on my way home get hit by a taxi cab and still look better than you do. Not if I was driving the cab. <laughs> well, you should be driving a cab. You're yellow. Hey, that's a sizzler! Well, <laughs> oh, that's a honey, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, one more crack like that and you'll be looking at the world through rose-colored beefsteak. <laughs> Oh, I will, eh? Huh? Now, boys, boys, please. After all, this is my anniversary. Oh, that's right, Don. I'm sorry. This is one day we should act like gentlemen. Well, I'm in favor of it. Okay, come on over here, Phil. Come on over and shake hands. Put her there, Jack. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> Gee whiz. <laughs> I mean, you, you didn't have to break my hand. That's just a sample. <laughs> Gee, my hands are wrecked. Now I won't be able to tear that telephone book in two at the party tonight. <laughs> oh, well. I can still recite my parody on Gunga Din. That always goes over, you know. Gee, you love to show off when you're invited out, don't you, Jack? Well, people expect me to be funny. After all, I'm a comedian. Tell him what happened when you went to Carol Lombard's party the other night. Now, don't start that. <laughs> oh, it wasn't, Mary. <laughs> well. <laughs> oh, I'll cut it out now. No. Come on, tell us, Mary. <laughs> well, oh. Carol invited us over to her house the other night, and Jack thought he'd hand everybody a big laugh right away. <laughs> oh, is that so? <laughs> so when we got there, he rang the bell. Then he stood on his head and started to bark like a dog. <laughs> well, what of it? <laughs> and when they answered the door, was he embarrassed? <laughs> Why? It was the wrong house. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's so funny about it? The man invited me in, didn't he? No wonder it was a sanitarium. <laughs> <laughs> Just the same, when I got to Carol's house, I was the life of the party, wasn't I? How about when I slid down the banister? I suppose they didn't laugh at that. They wouldn't if that nail hadn't been there. <laughs> yeah, well, let me tell you something, Mary Livingston. You're nothing but a little tattletale. Jack, Jack, please remember, <laughs> this is my anniversary. Oh, of course, Don. I'm sorry. Um, oh, hello, Kenny. It's about time you came in. Oh, I've been here all the time. I was over in the corner talking to myself. <laughs> oh, you were? Was it an interesting conversation? Not very. You know me. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Say, Jack, I've got something on my mind, and I wonder if I can ask you about it. Sure. What is it, Kenny? Said he, laying himself open to anything. <laughs> what is it? Hmm? Well, my love life has gone haywire again. Oh, the same old trouble, huh? Yeah. My girl and her boyfriend are going to get married, and I'm plenty burned up. <laughs> Why, Kenny, you told me yourself that she liked the other fella. Why should you be upset? They want me to buy the ring. <laughs> Well, that's what I call a lot of nerves. So they're going to get married, eh? Who's going to be the best man? I don't know. I'm going to be the flower girl. <laughs> well, Kenny, if you buy that ring, you ought to have your head examined. That girl is the most ungrateful gold digger I've ever heard of. Now, wait a minute. That's almost my wife you're talking about. Well, you're just crazy, that's all. What are you defending them for? Oh, I don't know. They're a nice couple. Yeah. Right after they're married, they're going on an automobile trip, and they invited me to go along. That's fine. Why should they invite you to go along on their honeymoon? It's my car. <laughs> Oh, well, that explains everything. Your girl, your ring, your car. If they move in with Kenny, folks, I'll scream. <laughs> Quiet, Mary. You'll throw him a thought. Well, Kenny, now that you've asked my advice about something which you won't take, how about doing your song? Okay. Of all the silly, stupid, idiotic kids I've ever known, I... Now, Jack, Jack, please remember, this is my anniversary. Oh, you and your old anniversary. I'm sorry I started it. Sing, Kenny. Anniversary, anniversary, anniversary. <laughs> One night the moon was so mellow Rosita met young Manuelo He held her like this, this lovely miss Then stole a kiss 
this fellow He said he was glad he'd met her And soon he would come and get her But she said, no, no, I cannot go Until I know you better Tippy tippy tin, tippy tin, tippy tippy ton, tippy ton. He kept on a stealing, and he had a feeling she was satisfied. Tippy tippy tin, tippy tin, tippy tippy ton, tippy ton. She was saying go, so so he held her closer. That's how he complied. On a stealing and he had a feeling she was satisfied tippy tippy tin tippy tin tippy tippy ton tippy ton he will always do so cause she has a true soul and he has a bride tippy tin very cute Tippy Tin, sung by Kenny Baker. Say, I never heard that before. That's a new one, isn't it, Kenny? Yeah, it's a little Spanish number I picked up. Has she got a friend, Kenny? Shoo, <laughs> Phil. He, uh, no, really, Kenny, it was very cute. Oh, say, say, Jack, Jack, I just, just thought of something. What is it? Is it, Don? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a little nervous. You know, this is my big day, and I've gone all through the program without mentioning our product once. Do you mind if I do it now? Now, wait, Don, this is your holiday. And as a special treat for you, I hired another announcer to do the plug. And I'm paying for it out of my own pocket. Oh, Jack, you shouldn't have gone to all that expense. Oh, it wasn't much. We know that, Sporty. Why? <laughs> oh, Jack, uh, why don't you let me do it? You know, I get a big kick out of it. No, Don, the arrangements are made. Now, here's your substitute right here. Are you ready, Mr., uh, Mr., uh... Mr. Finance Seal Forces Study of Investment Forces Study. <laughs> Mr. Watt, I, I didn't get that. Mr. Fine Seed of Boston, Mr. Boris said they made a stop. Honey, I still don't get What's your first name? Boris Sora Remus. Oh, oh, well. <laughs> go right ahead, Jerry. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, whenever you're thinking of Boris Seed of Boris Beach, and you find where it's a big kind of Boris Beach, don't bother with Fine Seed, just Fine Seed of Boris Seed. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> You see, Jack, you see, I better handle this. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, whenever you're thinking of an economical dessert, why not try Jell-O? It is tempting, inexpensive, and comes in six delicious flavors. Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. Yeah, I'm awfully sorry, Don. My plan didn't work out. Hey, buddy, are you sure that you're the fellow I hired? Well, last Friday night, the Tory come up and said, Benny Foster, me, because I didn't know the The big difference to me, Foster, but it's just I, I see, thought... your uncle couldn't come. I see. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. Oh, that's all right. We need private rate, right? Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. You're welcome. You're welcome. Goodbye. Well, next time I hire anybody, I'm going to try them out for sell it. To... <laughs> I'm sorry, Don. Oh, oh, that's all right, Jack. You meant well. You bet I meant well. And now, Don, let me tell you the real big surprise I've planned for you. Gee whiz, I've had so much already. Well, you heard Phil dedicate a number to you, and Mary wrote a poem in your honor. So now it's my turn. Here comes the showboat. Mary, see. <laughs> now, Don, as I announced last week, tonight, for a violin solo, I'm going to play Thanks for the Memory, written by Leo Robin and Ralph Ranger, the same boys who wrote Love and Bloom. Bless them. And, Don, I don't know of a more fitting occasion or a finer person to dedicate this number to than you. Thank you. Thank you, highbrows. <laughs> oh, Phil, uh, let me have a violin, will you? Okay. Hey, Misha, let Mr. Benny have your violin. No, it's Yasha's turn. Give him yours, Yasha. No, Misha, give him yours. Misha, Yasha, give me Herman's, anybody. <laughs> Here you are, Jack. Thanks. Gee, you think I was going to ruin the violin. I only want it for a few minutes. That's all it takes. Well, <laughs> I'm not going to break it. 
It's a little out of tune. Uh, give me A, fellas. <laughs> I said, A, I'm not going to the post. <laughs> <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, in honor of Don Wilson's 15th radio birthday, I will play a song that will soon be sweeping the nation. Thanks for the memory. Hit it, Phil. Okay. Wait a minute. See who that is, Mary. Oh, uh, Jack, it's Leo Robin and Ralph Ranger. Oh, Leo and Ralph. Hello, fellas. Hello, Hello Jack. Jack. Well, boys, you couldn't have picked a better time to drop in. I was just about to play your new song, Thanks for the Memory. Yeah, we heard you announce it last week. And we thought we'd come over. Oh, that's nice. That's awfully nice. Say, Jack, yeah. we'd like to talk to you for a minute. Do you mind? No, no, no. What is it, fellas? If it's okay with you, we'd like to talk to you alone. Oh, certainly, certainly. Mary, do you mind stepping out for a minute? You too, Kenny and Don. Huh? Okay, okay yeah. sir, but take care. You want me to go too, Jack? No, you stay here, Phil. After all, there are two of them. <laughs> <laughs> all right, boys. Uh, what's on your mind? Well, Jack, I, uh, uh, really, I don't know how to start Let this. me handle this, Ralph. My goodness, what's all this fuss about? And you, you know, Jack, we wrote thanks for the memory just a short time ago. Uh -huh. It's fairly well known now, but it hasn't reached the peak of its popularity yet. Well, if there's anything I can do, boys, you know, I'll... Yeah, th that song means more to us than anything we've ever written. Well, I appreciate that. Yes. And we wouldn't want anything to happen that would stunt its growth. <laughs> stunt its growth? Well, I'm not going to smoke when I play it, fellas. <laughs> now, come on, just what are you driving at? Well, uh... Well, what? Come on, get down to brass tacks. All right. How much do you want not to play Thanks for the Memory? <laughs> what? We'll give you $200. Oh, trying to offer me money, eh? Do you boys remember what I did for your other song, Love and Bloom? Yeah, I wish we had money then. <laughs> so you offer me $200, eh? Well, boys, all I can say is you've placed a fellow musician in a pretty embarrassing position. Will you take 250? Don't tempt me. <laughs> now listen, boys, tonight I'm going to play Thanks for the Memory. And you're going to stay right here and listen to it. And when I finish, your song will reach heights beyond your wildest dreams. 300! <laughs> Nothing doing, fellas. <laughs> Come on in, everybody. Now, quiet. I don't want any disturbance. Announce me, Don. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Jack Benny will play his own arrangement of Robin and Ranger's latest song success, Thanks for the Memory. beautiful folks. How can such rats write such sweet music? <laughs>
thanks for the memory from the big broadcast of 1938. Well, boys, did you hear that applause? Now what have you got to say? Congratulations, Jack. You did a great job. Thanks, Jack, old boy. That was a very pleasant surprise. And you were trying to buy me off. Aren't you ashamed of yourselves? You should have taken the money, Jack. I'll get them on their next song. Play, Phil. <laughs> Do your wintertime main news need more variety? Well, here's a swell new dish. It's one of the most delicious and attractive salads you ever made in your life. And it's made with clear, shimmering lemon jello and canned fruit salad. And it's done quickly and easily without one bit of trouble. Dissolve one package of lemon jello in hot water and chill until slightly thickened. Then fold in one can of mixed fruit salad cut into small pieces. Chill until firm and serve on crisp green lettuce garnished with real creamy mayonnaise. That makes just the grandest, most refreshing fruit salad. Lovely, pale, golden lemon jello with its fruit-rich goodness and pineapple, cherries, apricots, grapes inside that shimmering golden mold. Just be sure to make your jellied fruit salad with genuine jello because only jello brings you that delicious, extra-rich fruit flavor. So get a preview of spring with this grand new salad. Order some lemon jello tomorrow. This is the last number of the 23rd program in the new Jello series, and we're with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Well, Leo and Ralph, thanks very much for coming up here, and I hope that my humble effort has given thanks for the memory a little jolt. We think it did. Uh, so long, Jack. So long, boys, and thanks. Well, Mary, now that it's all over, give me an honest opinion. How was my solo tonight? It sounded like Rubinoff and your violin. Well, that's not bad, believe me. Good night, folks. Baker appears on the Jello program through courtesy of Mervyn Leroy Productions. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>